Sometimes there's these problems we run into when we're writing CSS and we have to use creative ways to overcome the limitations or the things that we're stuck in. So we have to use a hack or use something maybe in a way that was slightly unintended to be able to achieve our results. So today we're gonna to be looking at three common problems that we can run into and some pretty cool, mostly very simple solutions to them. Hello, my front end friends. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I hope you fall madly deeply in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least help you be a little bit less frustrated by it. And hopefully these little CSS hacks can do exactly that. And so let's just dive right into it. And this first one that we're going to be looking at is using 100 V max as a border radius. And so we should go to where my button is in my CSS right here. And what we can do, uh, you can see I've made my button really big with a big font size. Normally you wouldn't do that, but uh, what we can do is my border radius. And the, the problem with border radius is as long as the number is bigger than 50%, and it, obviously if we just do 50%, it makes a weird oval. Uh, but this, if it's not a percentage, but it's a value, so say I say, I don't know, a thousand pixels, it's going to make a pill shape. Uh, the problem is it's sort of magic numbery in a way, because if you make it too small, if I say 50 pixels and my font size was smaller, here it's actually working pretty well. <laughs> uh, but then all of a sudden you have this bigger button that, and let's exaggerate it even more, and because it passed this 50 pixel border radius, then it no longer is a pill shape. So one hack for this is to use 100 VMAX. And you, could, you don't even need VMAX really. This is We're gonna see why VMAX works well here. Uh, on the next one we're going to do, but the V max is viewport and then the maximum. So whatever's bigger between the viewport width, viewport height, it's the same idea. It's just as long as it's bigger than the height of your button, you're fine. And so it's a really gigantic number that just means no matter what, it's always going to be a pill shape uh, unless you have a button that's bigger than your viewport for some reason. And this leads us into the next one, which is also using VMAX, uh, which is right here using VMAX with a box shadow. Uh, this one's less important than it used to be because now we have a dialogue element, but depending on browser support and other stuff, and you probably wanna be using a polyfill or something, but I wanna show it anyway, because maybe you could find a useful situation for it anyway, and I'll show some limitations to this one uh, as well. But uh, if I click open here, I get like this pop-up that I've created. And so what I can do is on my overlay, I already have one box shadow on there, but we can stack box shadows. So I can do a box shadow with zero offset, zero offset that way, zero blur. Let's just put a comma here to separate them. So we have zero, zero, a zero blur. And then here on the spread, I'm gonna do 100 V max. And let's just do um, RGB. We'll do zero, zero, zero over 0.5, just so it's pretty dark and we can see it. And we need a space there, I think, is why that wasn't working. And there we go, we can see it's come in and we get this dark background that's coming everywhere. Uh, the reason here, again, VMAX is always gonna choose the bigger between your viewport height and viewport width. It's taking the larger of the two, so you know it's gonna be bigger than what you need. And like, even if I made this like a 500 VMAX, because I wanna be really sure, you'll notice it's not actually causing any overflow issues. Because it's a shadow, it doesn't actually take up any physical space. It's not like borders or padding or margins or stuff like that. So it's just a visual element. So if it does overflow off the page, it doesn't cause any side effects. And so you can get this, but as I said, there are some side effects to this where like I can still click on the stuff below. It's not being covered by another div or something else like that. So you do wanna be careful with this and use it for maybe specific things. Uh, this could even be as a page, you know, you have like a, a full on like one on this and then you fade it out or something. Uh, but yeah, just a quick way that you can cover the entire screen with something. Just be aware that there's different ways to use it. And if you do need to make a pop-up, the dialogue element with the backdrop pseudo element might be the better choice. Uh, so if you wanna know more about that, I've covered it in a previous video. So I'll link that down below and there should be a card popping up. And then this last one is maybe my favorite one. And so this is my full width. And you know what, just for demo purposes, let's do a margin bottom of 100 VW. Uh, just so I can scroll down farther, <laughs> there we go. Uh, and it might be that you don't have control over your HTML, and so you have this element that you need to be like this full width, the background needs to extend outside, but you're stuck inside of a container and you get, you know, it's stuck there and you don't have a way to change the HTML to get it out using a CMS or whatever it is, it doesn't really matter why, you're stuck. Well, what we can do is there's two solutions and they're, they're different in what they do. 
this first one I'm pretty sure was from uh, Leah Veru in CSS Secrets, uh, which I'll link to down below as well. It's an older book, but it's really, really good, which involves multiple steps. And we'll actually, we'll, we'll, let's take these steps one at a time to understand what it's actually doing. Uh, the first is to give the element a width of 100 VW, so you know that it's taking up the entire viewport. Now one issue with this width 100 VW is it will cause a little bit of side scrolling um, just you know because it's now sticking out you know whatever this space is here it's sticking out that much to the side. So uh, and as you can see once I scroll all the way over it's filling up that entire space. So that is the first step though and we need that so it's actually the size that we need it to. But then what we need to do is actually pull it back the other way. So here I'm doing a margin inline start. Um, which is the same as a margin left, but it's with a logical property. And what that's doing is it's now taking it and pushing it 50% of the way over to the right. Uh, you could actually, I think, just even do this with a margin um, left and right, or maybe, the, um, and I, I'm pretty sure you'd get the same result where it's sort of pulling the margins in both ways. But you can see what that's done again is it's pushed it halfway over, but in the parent only. And then we come back with a transform of translate minus 50% which is 50% of its own width, and it's gonna suck it back the other way. And now if we go and take a look, you can see it's taking up the entire viewport, and yeah, kinda of cool, right? Uh, and so yeah, that, that worked, I think, pretty cool. It depends on the type of thing you can need, because you can see my content is now stuck to the side here. Uh, so it's one of those things where if you need to escape out the full size, and you want the content inside of there to also be full width, you don't wanna just have a background that extends and keep your content centered, this would be the solution to use. But if you do want a background that goes full size, but keeping the content in the middle, there is a solution to this as well. And this solution isn't my own. This is from Tamani Afif, who runs CSS Challenges, so I'll put a link to uh, his stuff down in the description. And so let's turn off this version of my full width, and we can come here. So yeah, we're gonna turn that off, and whoops, we wanna keep that margin though. And so this solution is actually really similar, uh, it, or it starts in a similar way with the box shadow using a 100 V max. And so let's turn that on and you can see now, boom, we take up the entire thing. We just have this background color exploding everywhere, uh, just exactly like we saw before. But where this gets a little bit more clever is then using a clip path. And this is really cool. It's using the inset here on the clip path and let, let's just watch and see what this does. <laughs> and basically what it's doing is it's preventing any overflow. Uh, but by using the clip path to do it. So we're cutting off the top and the bottom of exactly what we see there. And the reason this is working, it's saying a zero top and bottom, but a negative 100 VMAX on the left and the right. So we're getting this zero top and bottom is going to line up with the top and the bottom of that original element. And then the negative on the two sides is pulling and allowing, it's basically saying don't clip the sides, but just clip the top and the bottom to our container there. Now there is one big limitation to this uh, and using this is obviously you need to set your box shadow to the same color as the background color on that element. The easiest way to do this might be to use custom properties, uh, but you, yeah, it's the one limitation because here if I did put a different color on here, let's just say I do my primary uh, 400, it's going to be blue on the sides, unless that's of course what you want. Um, but just to say that, yeah, normally if you want to do this, you'd have to just make sure that both colors are the same for it to be able to work, but it could be super useful when we're limited to the HTML and the changes to the markup that we can make. And if you like this video and you like these short tips and tricks and things like this, I have a short playlist here full of lots of cool things like this. And with that, I want to say a big thank you to my supporters of Awesome over on Patreon, Jan, Johnny, Patrick, Simon, and Tim, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.